This is the SEO Mindset Podcast with your hosts, Sarah McDowell and Tasmin Sullivan. This podcast is for SEO professionals and each week with the help of our wonderful guests, we discuss the important stuff that actually affects our careers and progression, but sadly often doesn't get talked about. You know, the invaluable soft and interpersonal skills that are often taken for granted, such as the skills we need for listening, time management, communication, and more. We also talk about the big issues that affect us and our careers, such as burnout, imposter syndrome, self-belief, saying no, plus other big issues and obstacles. With this podcast, we want to share knowledge on topics that unlock our listeners' true potential and enhance not only their careers, but all parts of their lives. So are you ready to prioritize your own personal growth and career development? Then let's crack on with this week's episode. Hello and a very warm welcome to the SEO Mindset Podcast. This is your go-to podcast for SEO professionals who want to um, do better uh, within their career, work on themselves, um, personal growth and all of that and doing that for themselves and not just the algorithms. Um, so yes, that's that's what we're hoping to achieve with this podcast. Um, your hosts are uh, myself, Sarah McDowell, and the wonderful Tasman Solomon. Unfortunately, it's uh, Tasman isn't here, but do not fret because I have an awesome guest for you, and his name is Dan Saunders. Now, Dan has worked in digital for eighteen years, and within digital marketing, he works closely with. The directors and heads of service to identify new business opportunities and strategies. Having an in-depth understanding of different markets and competitors in the area to maintain a competitive advantage which is used to work alongside key stakeholders in managing the translation of the business strategy into clear plans. Welcome to the podcast Dan. Thank you very much for having me, Sarah. You can tell that's just literally lifted out of my CV. I, I spent ages trying to get it right, <laughs> just trying to hit all the key buzzwords in there that anyone that uses for a CV. I mean, you did it, smashed it, smashed it Thank out of the park. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, now, unfortunately, um, not everyone, because um, most people, well, everyone will be listening to this, but I just want to say you are wearing a wonderfully warm looking jumper and I love the pattern on it. Thank you. It is one of my all time favorite jumpers. I am very stereotypical Northern and the fact that I still refuse to put my heating on, even though it is like five degrees outside. Yeah. I couple that with the fact that I'm part of Syrian. So like British summertime is still quite cool for me. Uh, but still, it's a case of, no, 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 no. If uh, I'd not have been uh, here today, I'd have had this on, a blanket, and more than likely my uh, dressing gown as well. So uh, this is this is me dressed up now in the uh, uh, work from home era. <laughs> I very much appreciate it. I mean, I'm in, um, so I, I'm wearing a fleece. Um, and yes, I bought, this is a recent purchase. And all my days, it is very warm. Very, very nice and warm. Um, right. So we are not obviously here to talk about clothing. Like I, I know that we could be fashionistas here and we could be talking fashion. Uh, but uh, yes, instead, we are going to be talking about promotions. Yeah. Now, um, this can often be a scary and taboo subject. Um and why, first question then, like within SEO or digital marketing or this industry, why? Why Why is it often a scary or taboo subject, do you think? That's a really, really interesting question because to me, it's just not been like that. And I get it might just be like different mentalities. And it's, uh, it's just something, you know, I came from a very sales background. So it was a case of I always had to sort of prove what I was worth and then I got into the habit of doing that where we work in SEO it's very difficult sometimes um to have that and I, I don't I don't know if you see the same thing but I always feel that when I'm speaking to some people in our industry that they sort of feel like they've got the they've, they're privileged to be where they are and they don't want to sort of upset that um 
or it might just be the the sense that you know it could be the typical British thing. We don't like confrontation. Um, it can lead directly to confrontation, but you know, not to stereotype us all. But you know, we are very much the stereotype for the reason. Um, or just the um, or just uh, the the lack of confidence in ourselves and what we're doing. Because you know, I I can't remember the last time I met someone uh, that did SEO and did it poorly. Um, every, you know, through you know through networks like Brighton SEO. Um, uh, all the different events when I get to speak to people and talk about it. anyone that's done the research or anyone that's even attending events uh, needs to have more confidence in themselves because it, uh, we're all just human. Um, whether that's the case or not um, is, yeah, it, to me, it's got to be one of those three things. I'm really happy to hear from anyone else that have, uh, that have other struggles with that when they come to talking about their promotions or a pay rise or anything along those sort of lines. But those are the ones that I, I tend to come across the most. I mean, it's interesting um, because you started by saying about mentality, right? And it sounds like you've always had a positive mentality when it comes to this kind of area and stuff. And um, as you were saying, the sort of reasons why people are scared or nervous, um, I definitely... I can relate to it and I think a lot of our listeners can relate to it as well because yeah like you said um people don't like confrontation um people in it can sometimes be an awkward topic to bring up um and when do you bring it up and I think there's a a bit of vulnerability as well because um if you're bringing this up with your with your manager or whoever's in um in control of promotions and pay rises and all of that um like you don't know what the reaction is going to be like right so um I think we can really get into our heads about it sometimes and that leads back to your to your mindset I suppose exactly and from from my standpoint there there can be no negative answer if even if worst case scenario you have put the case together you said right I want a promotion for x y z reason any manager worth their salt will if they say no will say no because of this but then mm. that gives you a plan of what you can do to get that you can say right okay what are my next steps how do I hit this and then you build up a plan from that if your employer says no I don't want to talk about it um then it's a case of right okay then that's another conversation to have from it because uh in the age that we're in at the moment uh, everyone that works in seo everyone that works in ppc or digital marketing as a whole we are a finite resource and we need to take into consideration that when we're doing our job well and we know in our heart of hearts if we're doing our job well we can have that we can have that conversation with them as well and like i said there's there is no uh, for any solid employer that you've got faith in there is no negative answer in this if they say no you know what, that's fine. Talk me through the steps that I can get there. If they say yes, bang, we're happy. But this is talking through the steps. And then it's also, it's really good to bring these up in your one-to-ones, quarterlies, whatever you have, making sure you're asking um, about yourself because that's what they're about. And people tend to, um, when I've been in one-to-ones or held one-to-ones, people have always been, you know, what uh, have always sort of just been accepting of what the manager's saying instead of, you know sort of challenging them to say right i want to do this i want to do this i want to grow and do this uh they kind of just sort of like i'm going to stick in my lane and just go with that 100 percent. and um uh part two um we will go into more detail and um give our listeners actionable things that they can do um when they're bringing up promotions with uh, their manager or people above them and stuff um so uh let's I think we should give Alice a bit of a pep talk I know that we've kind of already done that um but what are some of the reasons why we should be asking for a promotion I think it's um you know cost of living crisis to one side we take this you know yeah because uh, if we go back to tracking through history there's always the cost of living crisis there's covid there's uh uh, you know, what did we have before COVID? We had Brexit. What did we have before Brexit? We had uh, a Scottish referendum. Then we had, like, you know, taking a jump back, we had the war in Iraq. <laughs> you know, there's, there's always going to be a reason to say this is not a good time to do it. There's always, always going to be a good reason. When I first started, I learned how to, uh, when I first came into like sort of full time employment, 
I was selling houses in uh, in 2009. And for those old enough like me to remember that, that was when the bottom had fallen out of the market completely and no one was buying. So you just had to have that sort of go get it attitude. And I think uh, when you're asking for a promotion, you need to know your own value. And if you've done you know, you've done all these courses or you've made a significant gain in a certain area, you've got to be shouting about how good you are all the time. Because in our, you know, I know it's specifically in my industry at the moment, it's very, very uh, old hat, you know, in the DIY sphere. It's very much, you know, the, the person that's got the biggest sales numbers is the winner. But when we're coming into digital marketing, we're sort of seen as an add-on from that. Um making sure you're shouting about your successes and something that you think uh, is a personal achievement, but maybe you don't think the rest of your group or the rest of the marketing team or the rest of the company wouldn't care about. You'll be surprised about how talking about it, how posting about it, how emailing out to them to show this is a massive achievement resonates with your colleagues. Yes, a hundred percent. So if I'm following correctly, um, the reason, one reason why, people should be asking promotion is uh to kind of like shout about the good stuff that they're doing and Mm -hmm. um to show their worth within a company right um because i think sometimes um we get so focused or we get so honed in on a project or what we're working on stuff we we tend to like forget to shout about our wins or what we're doing and stuff so i think um Obviously, uh, yeah, like um, bringing this up with your with your company, your business, your manager, um, it's a good way of giving yourself some validation as well, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. If you've just spent absolute ages going through a, a big old project, your eyes are burnt out from looking at the screen, you don't think you can deal with numbers or you can deal with any sort of content anymore – and you've just done that massive achievement where you've just take you've had to sit back and take that break and go, oh, I can't believe I've just got through that. Or when you see the other side of how well it's worked, shout about that. Those two instances, you should have shouted out about how good you've done or how hard it was to do that so people can appreciate it. And it's not, a, oh, you know, it's not always a case of, oh, you know, I've, I changed this one title tag. That's great. That's fantastic. It's about when you've done the project and you've said, yeah. this is what we do. And, uh, you know, coming back into the actual advice in the second half, um, you know, it's about putting the, um, it's about putting the monetary value to it because that's what the, the big, you know, most businesses care about. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um, Okay. Okie dokie. Um, is there any other reasons that we should be asking? Uh, so obviously we're saying it gives you recognition, it gives you validation. Um, the other thing is you can make sure that you're, um, that you know your worth and you're being paid your worth. Uh, so especially like say if you've been in a job for a long time and maybe you've just got used to that, you haven't had a pay rise in a while, like maybe, maybe there's that side of it as well. I said, yeah, one hundred percent. That it's um, you know the life span of a digital marketer on average at the moment in time is about eighteen months. Uh, so most companies uh, are, are really inter- You know, if you've been in a company more than eighteen months, uh, you've lasted more than a company has budgeted for you there. And this is just this is just data I've pulled from LinkedIn and just following like key people, um, you know, in the digital sphere and just looking at how often we're all changing roles. So if you look at what you've done in the last 18 months, you might be thinking, oh, actually, maybe it's time to change role, uh, change to a different company where you could actually look internally and just be honest with your manager and say, look, you know, I've done this, this, this and this. Uh, I've been doing this for this amount of time. I've pretty much got it nailed on. I'd like to grow. I'd like to do something else and add this to your development. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, so personal development as well, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome point, awesome point. Um, yeah, I mean, that's quite shocking, isn't it? 18 months isn't isn't long <laughs> at it, all. It really isn't. But then when, uh, you know, look at back at my CV and I think, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that looks about right. You know, uh, I stayed in my first job for... Uh, uh, for what nine years uh didn't get a uh, you know went from slight promotions to just different t- you know just different titles in the job uh but uh there was no there was no real increase you know i think i went from 
you know, like uh, starting out on like 14k a year, and I finished up that uh, nine year period on 18k a year. Right. So okay. there was no, even if you could take considered inflation at the time, and yeah, you know, that wasn't that just wasn't right. And I think I just got to the point where I'm looking at some other people that were doing the same job, and I'm like, how are they living that life? You know, on on what I'm earning, and then you know, you have that honest conversation with somebody. It's like, well, hang about. They're, they're on significantly more than that. And I think that's where I really kind of got this whole bee in my bonnet about knowing what my worth is yeah. and how do I translate that to other yeah. people. 100%, 100%. Uh, right. Um, so we've obviously given people quite a lot of information here. Uh, so hopefully um they're geared up now they're like yes i need to i need to go and sort this out i need i need to ask about promotion i need to ask about a pay rise um so i reckon uh, we're in a good place to take a short break um and when we are back in part two we'll be discussing about um lots of different ways that you can go about um asking for a promotion and maybe even get into um like other so if a promotion isn't available what else what else can you look into um which isn't always just moving on from that role or that company thank you for tuning in for another episode of the seo mindset podcast if you enjoy the podcast and our episodes you can support me in Tasman by giving us a donation on our Buy Me A Coffee page. Uh, the URL is the seomindset.co.uk forward slash donate. You can donate as much or as little um, and, be, and we'd be very appreciative. You can also follow or subscribe to the podcast by going to the seomindset.co.uk forward slash listen. Um, so by going there, you can subscribe or follow um, on your podcast playing platform of choice. And this is a great way to be notified whenever a new podcast episode is live and ready for you to listen to. We are back for part two. Um, did you have a nice break, Dan? I did. Thank you very much. I had a very nice cup of tea in between time. I mean, again, it's a shame people can't see, but he's got a humongous mug, listeners. Like, yeah, and it says size matters on there. And I think that's very much the case when it comes to cups of tea and coffee. <laughs> exactly. This is, uh, I sort of measure how stressed I am on the level of, be- hot beverage if it's just a normal tea that's actually that's fine that's just a normal day tea two sugars oh i've got a bit of a uh, tight deadline i got to go through that the absolute utmost oh my gosh the world is on fire is black coffee two sugars so that's how i wow. sort of measure my stress levels if, I'm, it's if I'm down yeah that's like oh my gosh it's a it's a cup of coffee sort of sort of moment back away just breathe <laughs> it's okay we don't need to go down the full uh you know you know, the straight uh, coffee straight into the veins. <laughs> that would be very hardcore. Right. Uh, before we uh, end up on another uh, rabbit hole, talking about clothing, now we're talking about hot beverages. My bad. Uh, need to... <laughs> <No>, it's... <laughs> it's um, yes. Um, right. So what is the main key takeaway you want people to take away? I need to th- think of a better way of saying that. I've said it now, uh, from part one. Uh, the key takeaway I want you to come away from part one is that you are a lot more valuable than you think. Yes, um, self-worth people. people. 100%. It, I couldn't, it's, it's one of those things that everyone says, but do, do they really believe that? Uh, just to give you a bit of context, it's going to be a bit morbid now thinking about it. If you died, your work wouldn't, hesitate to replace you you know they'll have a little bit of a mourning period then they're two th- two three weeks later someone has picked up your workload you've been replaced carry on but uh for you you know that's it that's it so you need to remember that that as m- much as you love your job and uh, as much as you love the people you're working you've got to think about you and how good you are and mm. what your life's around and it's a horrible, horrible truth, and it's very, very morbid of me to say, but that's that's the fact, and that's what kind of drives the mentality behind it. 
Well, I have um, like a little less morbid um, that doesn't involve death. <laughs> um, but if you take, for example, so Elon Musk has taken over Twitter and hasn't he um, like ha- sacked um, like 50% of the workforce? Like, yeah. So that's... Yeah. That's another way of looking at it, right? Like um, any, anything could happen. Like, I mean, I'm not saying Elon Musk is going to come and buy the company that, <laughs> that you're working at. Like, that'd be in- interesting. But you never know. Things change in a company, don't they? Like, so exactly. you mean, need to you- take care of yourself. Exactly. I mean, you look at companies like, um, you know, Misguided, uh, Made.com. You know, these are brands that uh, I oh, remember as yeah. an agency trying to target them thinking, oh, these are really great brands. I really want to work with them. But look, you know, look where they are now. They're all part of the Fraser Group at the moment or, uh, or partly part of Next. I do like the Elon Musk analogy rather than if you were dead. I think I'm going to use Elon Musk as the boogeyman that's going to come in and buy your company and make you redundant rather than <laughs> if you were dead. <laughs> I mean, you've got both and they both do the same thing. So <laughs> you can... Yeah. Yeah. We're comparing Excellent. Elon Musk to, to like the Grim Reaper in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> but on, on the other side of that as well, like Twitter's taken a completely change of direction. They've just filed to be a financial services company in the US. And you just kind of like think, yeah, exactly yeah. as you said, Sarah, the, the world changes so much. One minute you're auditing memes on Twitter. <laughs> Next time you're giving, you know, text 10 minutes, you're either learning how to give financial advice or, you know, you're trying to I was gonna say you're trying for a job at Meta but they've just done the same thing yeah so you've just got to take care of yourself right exactly so part two then let's give people some actionable stuff that they can do to help um bring up the conversation of promotions with their with their manager or things that they can do um to make sure that they're in the right direction or their step towards asking. Yeah. So the first thing that I would say is audit yourself and be honest. Uh, Look where your strengths are, look where your weaknesses are, and then just sort of put it together to say, right, okay, these are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. What do I need to make weaknesses my strengths? And I know it sounds very, very, what's the word? Cliche is the word I'm looking for. Um, But once you've got that act of writing it down and actually seeing these things and being honest with yourself, that's where it opens you. So you open yourself up to be so much more free because you can say, right, okay, I want to do more of this. I want to do less of this. How do I get to do more of this rather than more of this stuff that I hate? Mm-hmm. So first step is being honest with yourself and taking a self audit. The next sort of step to me is, now this is where the salesman in me becomes partly useful for the SEO world. People in positions that can hire, <laughs> fire, give promotions, they tend to talk in one of three languages. One is in time, resource, or money. And you'd be surprised how many times that money is the least of those three factors. Um, Interesting. That's And if you're talking to someone, say, right, okay, here's, in terms of looking at resource, like, hey, here's what I do in a day. Here's what our competitor, my like for like, does day to day here's what we need to be more successful from then here's how much i'm willing to take take on from that so you're looking at the resource that you've got within the company versus what the company's overarching goals are for that year more than more often than not uh your ceo your managing director your marketing director will put out a forecast uh well in advance to say this is what the company is going to do this year if you can align yourself to those goals and talk to your, talk to them in terms of resource and how you add value to that, that's automatically clicking with them because you're talking in their language. That's their mm. currency. They are looking at resource, their time. And like I said, money is sometimes, you know, is often blown out proportion of how important it is for somebody. For you, you know, say, uh, you know, a fair pay rise, some would say, is anywhere between... Actually, this is, I suppose that's as thick as it is long, depending is um, depending on what uh, you work as. You know, it's, <laughs> is it really fair to say that someone uh, uh, is, uh, you know, at different levels deserves a 3% or someone deserves a 5%? But mm. I, tend to, I tend to look at uh, anywhere between 3 to 5% as a win from my side. So if you can then say, right, 
by giving me this money, you're then opening up this much resource, you're then opening up this much time, or you're uh, opening yourself up to this much money because the time that I take on or the resource that I take on would cost you this in terms of bringing on a new head uh, into the business. And at the time at the moment where businesses are wanting to make sure there's a squeeze on them, if you can talk, uh, if you can understand how your higher ups talk, and like I say, it's more than likely going to be one of those three languages. If you can then start reporting back to them in that language, then it changes, it opens up a whole new world for you. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And th- that speaking speaking their language is so so important, especially in the SEO world as well, because obviously in SEO we have our own lingo, we have. <laughs> Uh, we have our own successes and stuff, but um, we need to make sure that we are aligning ourselves because then it's really easy for those um, above that can grant these promotions or pay rises to be like, yes, I know what they're asking for. This is the proof. Do, do you know what? Yeah. Like, so speaking their language is so, so important. Definitely. And then the to couple onto that as well, once you've got that in hand make sure you book some time and you're clear with your manager why you book some t- you want to book that time in with them whether it's face to face zoom whatever i want to talk about uh having a promotion is this time convenient for you and just being straight to the point yes about yes it. be transparent because you don't want to uh because i can kind of see that you you might not want to put it in the writing at first because you're like oh I don't want them to know because they might just sh- shoot it down um but yeah you have to be transparent because you don't want to put your manager on the spot <laughs> because exactly. that's just going to go worse for you isn't exactly. it exactly being as transparent as possible and giving them enough time to consider their options as well so they can then say you know if they're given an, an allocation budget they could you know the best option for you is yeah sure okay I actually want to talk to you about this. I think we should do it. Here's how, here's what we're offering. Or that's interesting. As you can understand, the time, you know, which is more often the response that you get, as you can understand, times are tough at the moment. But as we've highlighted earlier, when aren't times tough? Times yeah. are just tough, full stop. Um, can we talk? You know, can we talk about it? The main point is having that conversation. And like I said, the worst thing they can do is say no. In which yes. case. Yeah, and and like you said, the the worst case scenario is no, but then that is open the door to say, right, okay, what next? How do we deal with that? And you need to have a con. What's the word? Con constituency plan. Yeah. Oh. Um. Oh my goodness! I completely forgot what the word is. <laughs> Did I say it wrong? No. no, no. Con contingency. Con- contingency. contingency. No. That is the word. We got oh my there. gosh! I completely forgot what the word. Was. I mean, I I was the one who was saying it and I forgot halfway through. Um, Yeah, so, and that contingency plan um, doesn't always have to be like, right, I'm going to look elsewhere. Um, And I think we sort of said early, didn't didn't we, about like looking internal, like, okay, so maybe a promotion isn't right now or uh, maybe a pay rise isn't right now, but what other things can I, is there other benefits that you can, you can get or um, timelines or yeah, like, and yeah. That's the key point. The timelines is the key point. If you can get someone to commit to a timeline, that's your road. That is literally the road, right? Okay. I've hit this, uh, this milestone. I've hit this milestone. I hit this milestone. I've done this, done this. This is what we've agreed before. Um, the last, uh, the last part is a little bit more poignant uh, don't be afraid to walk away oh well. yes uh, and that's um you know it's it's sort of like playing poker if you've got the cards then you know you've got the cards but in the other side of it as well you've got to be willing to you've got to be, you've got to be willing to lose and if you're not in that scenario where um you're not willing to lose then then it's different it's a different conversation that's the more drastic end that is if you've gone to your manager they've said no uh we're not doing any pay rises this year Okay, well, right, okay, well, what do I, what does the timeline look like? Well, we can't talk about timelines at the moment. Well, that's no, that's no good. Yeah. For me, yeah. I, I presented a, a fair and logical case to you as to why I deserve this money. If you don't think I deserve it, it's then time to have that honest conversation and say, yeah. I'll be honest with you, it's time for me to start looking elsewhere. 
Yeah, and like if they if they fail to bring up anything as like a compromise or something else, like um, yeah, like I said, like other perks as well, or other other ways that you can feel a bit more appreciative appreciated. Um, words are not my strong point today. Which no, no, is no not I, get, I get, I get what you're saying. I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, then you need to be, you need to have respect for yourself, right? Um, and you need to, yeah, walk away because at the end of the day, um, we end up working a great percentage of our life, right? And exactly. we need to make sure that we're happy, that we feel like, um, uh, that we're at a job that, um, like, knows our worth and things like that so yeah walk away if it's not if it's not right or um anything's frosty or um or things start to change because maybe after you've af- asked for a promotion maybe then then there's a, this weird toxicness like don't have time for that walk away exactly life is far too short to really worry about this thing and we start and exactly as you said Sarah. you know you spend most of your life working with people you know i um you know you you think about the people that you work with you spend so much time with them especially when we were in offices but now it's probably even more so we're on zoom because everyone sees a free spot in your diary and decides to put something in so you're back to back um you see and speak to these people more than you do your other halves more than you do your friends yeah. even in, in my case i speak to uh my manager more than i speak to my little boy because i speak to her like uh four or five hours a day whereas i only get to, you know i'll get to see him when I finish at five and then he's in bed for seven. Uh, or, so it's, yeah. you know, it's, you're spending so much time with these people. You've got to make sure it's the right fit. And it's also about asking these questions, even at interview stage as well. You know, what are the, you know, what are the chances? It's not asking like, you know, what do I need to do to get promoted? It's like, what's the progression roadmap yeah. look like? You know, because you don't want to be seen as to be looking and, you know, I've, oh, I've got, I've got an interview for this job. Actually, I'm looking for three jobs down from that it's like what's the progression look like because i'm interested in growing myself and that's what they they take away from it i want to be able to grow i want to have more more uh responsibilities and that's uh, from someone that's done interviews before that's one of the key things i look for someone that's got that growth mentality you've got to have that growth mindset yes definitely and funny you should say growth mindset because we have a podcast episode all about that so uh thanks there for the uh the internal promo of other podcast episodes excellent internal (laughs) linking (laughs) so so smooth uh right sadly dan um time is ticking and we are running out of it um so a few more questions to uh finish up what is the key thing people should take away from today? The one main thing. Know your self-worth and have confidence in yourself. That's two things. You are, as it's you, Dan, I'll allow it. Thank I'll you. Allow it. <laughs> Thank you. <I'll> tell you. <laughs> um, what is the best bit of career advice that you've ever received? <sighs> um. I can't think of any one thing in particular, but the person that gave me that advice uh, was Stephen Kenwright. Um, those who know, he used to be a big part of Branded 3, uh, co-owner of Rise of 7. Yes. Um, his advice, anytime I have any sort of career advice whatsoever, I go to him and he smashes it out of the park. He He's always, I think, I like to think that I'm one or two steps ahead of some people, but he's like, He's like a whole marathon ahead of most people that I speak to. Yeah, his mind is just constantly on. Um, so in terms of the actual specific advice, I couldn't give you that. But the person I go to uh, for the advice, uh, Steve Kenwright. Well, there there is the advice, right? If you do need career advice, find that one person. Find yeah. that person that you, you can go to. So there you go. You just needed to word it in a different way. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where can people find you online if they want to continue the conversation? Uh, probably easiest place to find me at the moment is LinkedIn. Uh, it's a picture of me with my dog over my shoulder because that is life at the moment, which is when you sort of, you've done that horrible bit piece of content, you can go take the dog for a walk or she'll come and interrupt your Zoom calls or anything like that. Uh, yeah, uh, I want Dan Saunders. Still on Twitter. I'm, not, I'm definitely not investing in, in the blue tick. I will keep it as it is. 
uh, for now, but I'm at Dan Saunders 86. Well, I'll make sure that uh, all the links um, to find you are in the show notes of this podcast episode. Uh, So that's great. Um, I just want to say thank you to Dan, my awesome guest for joining us. Um, Now, we do end every episode now with a pledge. And I'm going to put you on the spot and get you to say the pledge because that's fun. So are you ready? I am. Do I have to do my hand on my heart or is it just... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Hand on heart, please. Like you hand mean it. Okay, right. I am an SEO who prioritizes mindset and personal growth and not just rankings to improve visibility and algorithms. That was such a heartfelt pledge. I could feel it. <laughs> so, I did try and learn it. I really did, but it just wouldn't stick in my mind. I was just like, no, this is... My mind just wasn't connecting the dots in the right way. This is one of the, one of the things I hate about myself. I can look at something and I'll look at data and I can form conclusions from that. Trying to remember words from a script <laughs> or like le- you know trying to re- quote lines from a book, and I'm like, oh, what was the word I was looking for? <laughs> well, you said it wonderfully, and I never want to hear that you hate anything about yourself, Dan, because you're a wonderful human being. Um, right so uh, yes thank you very much to Dan for joining me thank you to our listeners for tuning in for another episode Uh, just as a reminder that if you do enjoy our episodes please do share them with other people Uh, so if there's a particular episode that you like find the link to it and share it with a friend family your dog like you never know they might enjoy the podcast too uh, but yeah the more people that we can get listening to this podcast obviously um the better for all those algorithms and all that jazz right uh so yes um wonderful right let's say goodbye and until next time Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the SEO Mindset Podcast. If you enjoy the podcast and our episodes, you can support me and Tasmin by giving us a donation on our Buy Me A Coffee page. Uh, The URL is the seomindset.co.uk forward slash donate. You can donate as much or as little um, and and we'd be very appreciative. You can also follow or subscribe to the podcast by going to the seomindset.co.uk forward slash listen. Um, So by going there, you can subscribe or follow um, on your podcast playing platform of choice. And this is a great way to be notified whenever a new podcast episode is live and ready for you to listen to.